You're listening to The Locker Room with Billy Schwime on 97.3 ESPN and the free 97.3 ESPN mobile app. This is great lead-in music for Tommy Green. Like, what is he going to say? Because yeah. I got a lot to ask him. We're back yeah, broadcasting a- live at the Tom's River Auto Group studio right here in Northfield. It's The Locker Room with Billy Schwime. The Locker Room Youth Movement. Yes, the sir. producer, Danny Ryan, the intern, a- intern Andrew Leeds. Every Sunday, we go on the mound with former Phillies pitcher Tommy Green, brought to you by the John R. Elliott Hero Campaign for Designated Drivers, reminding you not to drink and drive and to always have a designated driver. Hey, sign up now for the June or for the 12th Annual Hero Walk and Run on Ocean City's Boardwalk Sunday, October 15th. Go to HeroCampaign.org to register today for your Hero Campaign's biggest fundraiser and help them prevent drunk and impaired driving. That's HeroCampaign.org. Let's go to the Maserati, the Mainline Sports Hotline, and welcome in former Phillies pitcher Tommy Green. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning, brother. Good to be back with you. Yeah, you had a nice little vacation, huh? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, yeah, legitly just got home last night. <laughs> now, Tommy, that, that, that just brings me right to my first point. Tommy, I'm, I'm worried about Kyle Schwarber. His 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 game is just deteriorated. He, he's not seeing the ball. He's not playing well. He's under a lot of pressure. His body language is no good. If you were the manager, could you could you sit him down for a couple of days and just like let him sit and watch? How do you handle that? Well, I mean, I mean, it's a two a double edged sword there when you do something like that. You know, I mean, um, you know, if he's scuffling like that and he's, uh, you know, obviously I saw some, you know, one of the games where he cost him uh, in the outfield where he cost you, I mean, uh, uh, basically the game, yeah. um, you know, and it's just, you know, it's weighing on because you know he's working and trying to do all he can do to be a better ball player, a more consistent ball player, you know, but that's what makes the manager's job so tough. Um, you know, give him a day off, you know, uh, and, and let it, if it comes into pitch hitting, uh, you know, late in the game, you need one swing of the bat. Yeah. You use him for that, but it could be where they try to do that for, it wouldn't be a bad thing maybe to do that. You know, give him, give him a little bit of a mental break, um, uh, and the daily grind a little bit, uh, and just let him, if he's working on something, probably let him just work on that, you know, so hopefully he can kick in to do that. But like you, uh, your suggestion, you know, I mean, it could be a good thing, but that's what makes the manager's job so tough because, you know, he's one of the, I mean, leaders of that team. He can, he can do some damage. If he's hot. I mean, it's still, it's still June. Yeah, I know, you know Tommy. I, mean? I hear you, Tommy. I hear you, but I was at the game Thursday and it wasn't just exclusive to Kyle Schwarber. I mean, the body language yeah. on the first five batters, I mean, they were, they were swinging at every first pitch. They were, they were, uh, they weren't running deep counts. I mean, it just didn't look like, uh, a, a team that should be playing playing the way they've been playing. They just don't look like their their body language is bad. But listen, Tommy, I, I brought this up to the to the youth movement here in the locker room. Uh, we went to the game on Thursday, and I started booing, and people turned around and looked at me like I had three heads. Well, <laughs> well, sometimes you do. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, this is you know, a, this is Philadelphia, man. Expectations, man. I uh, know, but hey. It's uh, yeah, I can see why they turn around, you know. I mean, uh, you know, but hey, yes, you're right. If you want to boo, you boo. Right. And that's part of it, yeah. Well, Tommy, but, uh, when you were a you pitcher. Know, you, look at the, you look at the difference, Billy. You look at the difference in the past few weeks in this past week. Um, you know, what was the difference in, in, in the teams, you know, the way they played and how they won ball games? They won on the stretch where they they played good together as a unit team. They pitched, they hit, right. they you know, they combine together and do things. This past week, they really didn't hit, and 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 they pitched their tail off. And what's the worst the is Tommy? Part. They're I mean, getting they're getting great starting pitching. Their starting pitchers yeah. are on fire. Well, I mean, they are, but you got, and that's what's so great about this game of baseball. You know, they're facing other pitchers that that pitch the ball too, and it comes down where we had a chance to win those ball games. You know, one swing of the bat makes a big difference, and. uh you know, instead of have a two and three week from la- from Sunday to Sunday, you know, or Sunday to yesterday, a two and three week, we could have had a you know a four and one week yeah. almost. Yeah. You know, so I mean, it, it was that close where it was one swing in the bat, you know, and and even though we didn't hit well, it could have made a big difference in the game. You see, that's what makes this game so great, you know. Uh, but we got to find a way to be uh, a little bit more consistent, 
you know, you know, I mean, you're going to have those weeks where you do win, but at least we won two ball games. We didn't go zero and five, you know, yeah. or one and six like we've done few, or, or one and five like we've done a few times during the week, which really hurts you, you know. So I mean, you're having playing catch up all the time. Now you're, you know, it's like giving up a three run homer or a one run homer, a single homer. You know, I mean, it's hard to recover from a three run homer, but you still can get by on a one run. Yeah. You give up a couple of them and still be okay. You know, so it's that type of it's that type of thing when you start re- as far as winning during the week. You know, you want to you want to keep it. You know, uh, uh, you know since they didn't hit as well, if they can keep it to two and three, that's you know, I mean, it's it's okay. It's it's not a good week. A good week is the opposite. You know, is is three and two. So. Hey, Tommy, Danny Ryan here. We were talking a little bit before you hopped on about the possible deadline moves this team could make. And, you know, obviously Dave Dombrowski is an active man at the deadline in the offseason, but no one's expecting him to make three or four moves. If you had to make one move to solidify one position or one spot in the rotation or bullpen, what would you do? It doesn't even have to be a specific player, but what position are you targeting? Because there's been rumors of first base, relievers, a fifth starter. I mean, there's a few needs on this team. Well, I mean, if you if you got if you're doing a wish list, it's got to be somebody with some pop, you know, that can help you, you know, because we're not hitting home runs either, you know. So I mean, that one's I mean, where it can help you. So, um, you know, you heard you've heard the name Goldschmidt come around, but you know, that'd be awesome to get somebody like that. Is that feasible for in their in their in their in their you know for his future? Um, I mean, that's going to cost you because I think he's still got a year left, right? Yeah, you know, and he's, uh, he's got thirteen. Home, so. he, he's got thirteen home runs. He's about, I believe, like two eighty nine. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, two eighty nine, two ninety. Yeah. Hey, there's nothing wrong with no, that. That's nothing a great at all. Big league hitter right there. Yeah. You know, so I mean, but I mean, that, those guys got a chance. You know, he's got a proven track record of uh, you know doing some damage, and that's you know, it comes down to you know when I was at the spring training game. Uh, you know, when I went this, the first time I've been in a long time for as, you know, going down and watching, you know, a spring training game. And the only game I saw was the one Reese Hoskins got hurt in. How much now are we missing that, that uh, power out? 30 home him? runs out of, the, out of the lineup from the right-handed side. Yeah, too. I mean, so, I mean, it's a big, it's a huge thing. Plus the confidence that he brings or the clubhouse presence that he brings all the time, you know, and, I mean, it's a good thing. So you're looking for you to add somebody that's going to you know, be able to do some damage too, you know. You know, and they got to solidify, you know, uh, you know what they want to do. The big thing is, I mean, it, what's hurt them and nipped them in the bud as far as Harper not being able to play. You know what I mean? That's hurt them a lot. You know, as far as defensively, you know, uh, you know, solidifying the outfield yeah. position. You know, because you know Swerver does the best he can do. You know, he's working at it out there, and. Uh, but when it comes down to you know playing the game, bottom line is pitching and defense, and you got to solidify your defense and make the catches you need to make in the routine ground balls you need to make. You know, and that's bottom line. You're not giving away runs. We gave away a lot of runs this past past week. You know, you look at, but we didn't score many, but we gave away. You know, so you know, I think we allowed 11 earned runs during the week, and you know, and then 16 scored. So that's five unearned runs during the week. That's huge. Yeah. You know? So. Hey, Tom Green, this is Andrew Leeds, and you just brought up Bryce Harper towards the end of that, and I was going to ask about Bryce. You know, he's we talked about it just before he went on, how it's been exactly one whole month since he's hit a home run. So I was curious, what what do you think with Bryce Harper is the most thing that he needs to, like, do you think it's just still a matter of him getting used to being back from the injury? Or, or, or maybe maybe he's not fully recovered. Yeah, exactly. Do you think they rushed him, or when do you think it starts to become a true concern? Well, well we can speculate all we all we want, you know. You know, people heal at different times. You know, it's it's great to see him play. I mean, it's not that he's he's going out there and sucking. You know what I mean? For the most part, he's just not had, got the power out output. I mean, he's hitting what? You know, two eighty, two ninety, almost three hundred. You know, somewhere in that range right now. Um, I think he's batting two ninety one. Uh, yeah, I mean, what more could you ask exactly. for? That's concerned, but you know, his power production. You know, what while he's do, going through this process, he's having to go through, and he's working hard. You know, doing, going through the progression of, of of strengthening this arm, you know, and that side, you know, of his body, and also his throwing progression too. You know, he's got to do things right mechanically. And when he's going right, he's driving the ball to left center. Right. right. You know, so I'd like to see those line drives be going to left center, and sooner or later, if he's staying on balls like that, he's going to square up other balls. You know, and, 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 and doing let, that. So, and, and Tommy, let's make it clear. 
<laughs> while, while Bryce Harper is, it, it's a little bit of a power outage. I mean, he has reached safely in uh, 14 straight games since June 8th. He's got 15 hits, eight walks. So he's, 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 you know, he's still getting on. I mean, he's still productive. He's just not knocking in. He just, a, it's just a power outage. So he's just not hitting home runs. Yeah. He's not hitting double. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, then it, then it comes back to the thing where you're talking about possible moves they could make to get somebody, you know? And, uh, I mean, uh, obviously, Baum, uh, Baum's not hitting any home runs right. I mean, his power, he, he's, I think Baum's got a great approach at the plate. You know, he's scuffling right now a little bit. But, you know, still we're missing that power guy, I mean, that power output a little bit. In a situation, what do they do? Do they go after somebody, you know, like the guy from St. Louis? Or, you know, and, play, and put him at first and put Baum back at third, you know, and, and that type of thing. Uh, I mean, but you know that's that's where this team's look. I mean, at right now, you know, when as far as uh, as far as the power output, and they're missing, you know, Harper being there, and you can't take a chance on him, you know, putting him in too early, playing him at first base, you know, uh, or you know, or try to put him in the outfield. He's got to go through the progression throwing, uh, yep. and uh, so he can make those. So we do not want him to have a setback whatsoever in that. You know, we need him to keep building, to keep hitting, because he's hitting right now. It's just, yeah, the power's the power's going to come. It's just like a pitcher that goes through it. The, the power's, you know, you just don't want him to be hurt. You want him to be able to keep pitching and going through, and the velocity kind of builds, you know, and keeps going. So I mean, but that's how you learn how to pitch is when you're not, you know, you don't have your best stuff, and that's when you learn how to hit. You maybe not feeling your best, but still doesn't mean you may can't stay on the ball and drive it the other way and do the little things that helps your team win. And yeah. You know, and, and and that might make you a better all around ball player in, in in the final outcome of things. Hey Tommy, I want to build upon my last question too. And you know, before you hopped on as well, I mentioned that once Bryce Harper and I completely agree with you. Don't rush him back. Get him in the field when he's ready and he's through his progression uh, from rehab. But once Bryce Harper is available to play first base, I would love to see Christian Pache and left put Schwarber full time at DH so he can focus on that and have Bryce at first. But obviously, if you pick up a guy like Goldschmidt or you know, CJ Crone, that changes the whole equation. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, with that being said, what would you be willing to give up for a first baseman if you did sacrifice the defense, keeping Schwarber and left? I'm certainly not a big fan of giving up the number two prospect in Mick Abel. Painter's untouchable for me. I mean, what kind of prospects yeah. or even veterans would you be willing to give up? Well, if you're trying to get something, you got to give something. So, yeah. I mean, sometimes it's going to cost you. You know, a little bit of something. Could it be a McGarry? Could it be or, or Abel or something like that? So you got your untouchable, couple of untouchable guys probably, but it's got to come down to your specific need in the, in the guy that you're trying to get. Is he going to be that immediate impact? You know, is he going to do that? Right. You know, so I mean, that's what the decision's got to come down to. Do you give up the pitching, or you know, because that's what we have. You know, because it'd be great to solidify the defense in the outfield and you know and, and do the positive things. Uh, Pache is, I mean, he uh, obviously you can see the tools he's got out there in the outfield. He can fly and go get them, and he plays great. I mean, great def- defense. And Kevin Long, you know, he's you know he's working some magic with him, giving him some com- confidence at the plate when he gets the opportunity. And that's what you want from a young guy is to have that. That's going to make him a better. I mean, going to give him a chance to crack the lineup. And if he keeps doing it, they might decide to do something like that. You don't know. Right. So, I mean, it's about putting pressure on guys. And right now we haven't had anybody in the minor leagues really putting pressure on our guys to do things. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's just, just the way I look at it. You know, competition is good within the organization to try to push things. You know, so, yeah. um, you know, and that's just where they're at right now. So they got to figure out, you know, if they stay status quo a little bit, you know, and, and or do they try to push the envelope a little bit? So every, I mean, that's where it's at. Every Sunday we go on the mound with former Phillies pitcher Tommy Green, brought to you by the John R. Elliott Hero Campaign for designated drivers. One thing I got to say though, Tommy, like I, I alluded to it earlier with my booing, but this is they, they sold out again yesterday. I mean, people are coming yeah. to see this team. They like the players. They like the 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 the, the, the feeling that this team can bring us, but they just haven't been doing it. It's very frustrating. Yeah, it's very frustrating, well, Tommy. Have- they haven't done it on a consistent basis. Yeah. You know, they got on the roll, roll right there. They did it for a few weeks, and that put a lot of energy back into the thing. They felt like the team's going to turn the corner, which they're right there. They're holding their head right there right now. But they got to make some hay against the guys they need to make hay against, you know, as far as every now and then beat the Braves, you know. They haven't done that yet. 
you know, win that game like we 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 had we could, had a chance to, you know. And right now we have it. Not that we're say to speak, we want to win the division, but right now we're not playing good enough to do that together as a team, you know, on the same page, you know. But they got to find a way to do that to give them an opportunity to stay. You know, right now we got the opportunity to get in the wild card stuff and, and do that. They need to start playing consistent ball and get in that, get that mojo going. Yeah, get uh, that mojo back and they're playing consistent baseball. Yeah. All right, and today we got look, we got Zach Wheeler on the on the mound. He's six four, six and four with a three point four eight ERA against Karras. Uh Mets. Like I think the Mets haven't been playing well. I, I don't think they're playing up to their. We, we need to win today, Tommy. I think we need to win. Yeah. We need to win this series today, man. Lineup just yeah, we dropped. Need, by the we way. need. You know, it's just like watching. I mean, I didn't get a chance to watch the game yesterday, but you know, seeing what I saw of it, you know, you know, uh, watching Scherzer and, and Sanchez. Sanchez gave you what you, what what we wanted from him to get a look. Keep us right there in the ball game. His chance and, and Scherzer, you know, he I mean, he pitched six innings, while well, gave up a couple runs, but we were right in the ball game to do things. And that's you know, that one swing of the bat, we got to have it to do things. So, you know. To do things, we just haven't scored a lot of runs this week, and you know we got to find a way to do that. Now we don't, we can't ask any more of our pitching to do what there is. We got to stay right there, you know where we're at. Hopefully they can stay right there, and the hitters, the timely hitting comes in to push well across some runs. All right, Tommy, we got the uh, we got the starting lineup for the Phillies. Uh, Danny Ryan's going to read it off. Right yeah, now. lineup goes as follows: Schwarber leading off in left, Turner at shortstop batting second, Castellanos in right batting third, Harper at DH batting fourth, Real Muto five catching. Batting sixth, Bryson Stott at second. Batting seventh, Alec Bohm at first. Batting eighth, Brandon Marsh in center. And batting ninth, Edmundo Sosa at third base. Mm-hmm. So he's staying yeah. with the same lineup, was, Tommy. Well, that's pretty much status quo, you know. And hopefully, you know, the week that uh, hopefully Marsh can keep going while he's doing to turn the lineup over, maybe to give, maybe uh, Swerber still have the June, the Juneitis. I'm not the Juneitis, <laughs> but the June, June luck, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that he has, and you know, I mean, and do some things. That's what I mean. That's what you want. That's why they put him there. You know, he's been he's ambushed some guys a lot. You know, early in ball games. So that's hopefully we can keep it going a little bit. All so. right, Tommy Green, as always, we appreciate it. Hey, listen, man, give me a call when you're down to shore. We got to go out for a couple pops. I hear you, pal. We have to do that when I'm down there. I've been run. I've been running all over the place, brother. <laughs> all right, Tommy Green, have a good afternoon, and we'll talk to you next uh, Sunday. You, you got it, man. All right, there he is on the mound with former Phillies pitcher Tommy Green, brought to you by the John R. Elliott Hero Campaign for Designated Drivers, reminding you not to drink and drive and to always have a designated driver. Sign up now for the 12th annual Hero Walk and Run on the Ocean City Boardwalk Sunday, October 15th. Go to herocampaign.org to register today for the for Hero Campaign's biggest fundraiser, and help them prevent drunk and impaired driving. That's herocampaign.org.